Hello, welcome to this Tripwire Tuesday presentation, and thank you for joining. I'm Jim Walkhouse, and I run Tripwire's Technology Alliance program, which means that I get to work with our ecosystem partners collaborating on your cyber defenses. In that capacity, I'll be presenting Stocking Your Data Lake with Prize Fish, which is all about our Tripwire Enterprise and Tripwire IP360 apps built for Splunk Enterprise. You've invested a great deal in your data lake already, but is it populated with the data that is going to help your IT staff identify, detect, and respond to the biggest threats first and in the most effective way possible? One of the things we'll learn about in this session is why Tripwire Enterprise events are so very valuable in Splunk for detecting threats. We'll look at a likely malware investigation using Splunk populated from both Tripwire Enterprise and IP360 Vulnerability Scanner. And we'll talk a little about how using Tripwire Log Center's Advanced File Collector Agent, a precursor to the Tripwire Axon technology, can help ensure log collection and data reduction to only the choices of events of interest. Finally, We'll discuss some of the responses available to a Tripwire customer working from Splunk Enterprise within the context of adaptive response. The reasons Tripwire Enterprise events stand out in the Splunk data lake is because they are on the favorable side of six of the seven Vs of big data. And for the seventh, Splunk Enterprise is excellent at visualization. Tripwire Enterprise produces only 5 to 15 megabytes of baseline information. That's a one-time occurrence from a single node that is a system with an agent. And less than a 1 megabyte of change data and events per day under normal circumstances. Compared to a firewall or router, our change in policy data is barely measurable. So it is very low volume and low velocity. The data is structured as added, modified, or removed elements, and the tests that have either a passed or a failed state. Some advanced customers have extracted unstructured queries for specific use cases, but on the dimensions of variety, Tripwire is well suited to easy access to rich contextual events. On variability, Tripwire literally holds a patent on homogeneous monitoring of heterogeneous nodes. And because the data is coming from Tripwire, you know it's good. We've been doing this for two decades. Now, when it comes to visualization, you know Splunk is excellent. That said, Tripwire Enterprise is only concerned and excellent at integrity and configuration monitoring. But if you want to visualize that data alongside those firewall access events or your NetApp storage events, or some other third-party information we don't provide, then you are doing great using Splunk Enterprise for that visualization. And that is why it makes sense to bring the super events from Tripwire Enterprise into Splunk Enterprise. But Tripwire isn't just about integrity monitoring. With IP360, you can identify the hardware and software assets in your environment and create an inventory in Splunk Enterprise. Further, using credentialed scans from IP360, you can identify vulnerabilities on assets and use that information to patch the systems that will be targeted before they are ransomed. Let's look at a quick scenario. By deploying the Tripwire Enterprise Agent to potential target hosts, we are gathering change events from most operating systems without the tedious work of enabling object auditing at the operating system level. And the Tripwire IP360 device profilers are identifying assets through either active or passive scans and detecting vulnerabilities by scanning for them. Splunk Enterprise is receiving this Tripwire data via two free apps along with all the information it gathers from event sources in your environment, such as those chatty firewalls we mentioned before, or directory authentications from users, or perhaps indicators of compromise from threat intelligence sources. What we all know is that at some point, someone is going to click on the wrong email link or web advertisement, and life will become very interesting very quickly. 
When that happens, the malware installs and something changes on the endpoint. In order to persist, the malware needs to set up at least a new registry key, which Tripwire Enterprise detects and sends to Splunk. Even the fastest infections will still write something captured in that audit event information that goes to Splunk from the Tripwire Enterprise agent. At Splunk Enterprise, these common information model normalized events are available for correlation with threat intelligence sources, and known good or known bad is quickly ascertained within a query. Tripwire is providing content changes, hashes, file names, process names, registry key changes, user information, and network port changes. All of this behavioral information and change information is what is used to correlate with indicators of compromise from threat intelligence. From Splunk, extracting more valuable forensic data from the Tripwire Enterprise agents is only a right click away as there is a pivot provided in the free app using the element name and element unique ID as a variable. Another pivot uses node IP address and policy test results names to dive into those details. These pivots mean we can look not only at the current state of the systems, but also look at them historically as well, perhaps indicating that this indicator of compromise has been dwelling from more than a few minutes or a few days. Knowing that information is going to be critical to cleaning out the infection and recovering from it. Further, the IP360 app for Splunk allows for pivots from the vulnerability and asset information into IP360 focus, which uses dimensions of application, operating system, vulnerability, network name, and network port associated with the nodes in Splunk. As the malware infection gets comfortable, <laughs> It will call out to its command and control servers to acquire new modules or instructions and perhaps start exfiltrating your enterprise's information. As the dwell time increases, the attacker will move around from the initial infection, scanning your network and looking for trust relationships to exploit. With sufficient configuration hardening and vulnerability management, this lateral movement might be thwarted. In other words, implementation of good foundational controls is actually an incredibly effective defense. By managing vulnerabilities with IP360, you are protecting your assets. And according to most analysts, 80% of all these threats can be prevented by implementing good security hygiene before the attack. And a final point before we leave our hypothetical attack scenario. The Tripwire IP360 app for Splunk Enterprise will help you drive more appropriate scanning. For example, firewall logs will indicate networks that may be unscanned, or patching events will indicate nodes that should be scanned to indicate current patched state. And visualizations in Splunk will provide insight into the riskiest assets in need of some TLC. Speaking of which, what do we mean by solving the last mile problem? For Tripwire Log Center, or TLC for short, with Splunk, we mean using an agent to collect logs and guarantee their delivery to your data lake. When a TLC asset leaves the enterprise network, where do its logs go? We have customers who are gathering those logs with the TLC Advanced File Collector and storing them on the assets until it's connected to their enterprise, where the agent then transmits that data to the Tripwire Log Center Manager, which normalizes the events, correlates them, and forwards them to Splunk Enterprise. Another benefit of this architecture is that all of the connections between the advanced log collector and the TLC manager are encrypted. Further, the events are compressed so you gain a reduction in volume and optionally can also reduce your velocity 
by aggregating similar events into a single super event with a count. And finally, if you've ever needed to deal with Windows Management Instrumentation or WMI collection from a Microsoft system through a firewall, you've seen that WMI is both multi-port and less than optimal from a security standpoint. With TLC agents doing the collection, this chatter is reduced to one configurable port that is encrypted, compressed, and guaranteed. So, the last mile from endpoint to enterprise visualization is solved by combining Tripwire Log Center with Splunk Enterprise. In this reference architecture from a large enterprise customer, we are illustrating the ease of having Tripwire Log Center act as the last mile for Splunk Enterprise. In this example, the assets in the environment are using a combination of agent-based collections from Tripwire and agentless collection through Tripwire Log Center or directly to Splunk. The Tripwire components all integrate directly into Tripwire Log Center, which provides lower level information to operations teams who might not have access to Splunk directly. When used with asset management, configuration management database technologies, and identity and access management technologies, the Tripwire products are contextually enriched with user, asset, and change ticket information. All of this goes into Splunk Enterprise through Tripwire Log Center. I occasionally get asked why Tripwire isn't included in Splunk's Adaptive Response Initiative, and the simple answer is that we already provide several out-of-the-box workflow actions in our Splunk apps, but we'd like to build more based on customer feedback. In the Tripwire Enterprise app for Splunk Enterprise, there are the pivot functions on node, element, and policy test results that I mentioned earlier. These are all well and good, but did you know you can also remove an element with Tripwire Enterprise? Maybe a malware element? In the Tripwire IP360 app for Splunk Enterprise, we have the pivots I mentioned into application, operating system, vulnerability, port, network name, and obviously IP address. Any of that information could be used to build out a more automatic workflow, say into patching or other operational activity. What else would you like to see in these apps? Let's have that discussion during the question and answer portion of this presentation. Before we get to the Q&A, I wanted to briefly show you some sample screenshots of the Tripwire data visualized in Splunk. You'll see here, this is uh, data primarily from Tripwire Enterprise. After this presentation, you're hopefully thinking, wow, where do I get this? And the answer is the Splunk base. The apps we provide are free. I will caveat that, that while the Splunk apps are developed by Tripwire, they are supported by the Splunk community. If you have questions about them, you should post in the community. Uh, I and a small team of developers will actually be uh, looking at those questions and able to answer them there. So, if you'd like to take a look, simply go to apps dot splunk dot com and type tripwire. Now, let's go to the question and answer section of this presentation. Hello, everybody. So, uh, Jim Walkhouse here. Uh, I'm. I hope you enjoyed uh, that presentation on stocking your data lake with prize fish, uh, all about Splunk and Tripwire. If anyone has any questions, uh, please use the uh, Q&A uh, uh, tile uh, at the bottom of the screen, and uh, I can take your questions now. You can you can type them in, or you can you can ask them. No need to be shy.
Anyone? Any questions about uh, how to implement uh, this solution, uh, where to get information about uh, this solution, or uh, even general questions about Tripwire? I have feedback. Somebody enjoyed the presentation. Uh, oh, and uh, just so you know, there will be uh, a posting of the uh, recording of this presentation uh, in a uh, blog post on uh, state of security. And I do have uh, one question about installation of the app. Uh, is that pretty straightforward? And um, the answer to that uh, largely depends on um, your uh, implementation of Splunk. Uh, when I originally designed the app, it was designed to be uh, installed on a uh, Splunk search head. Uh, very few large enterprises do it that way because they have uh, forwarders in the mix. If you have a heavy forwarder, uh, you would install the uh, Splunk app there. And by the way, it needs to be a heavy forwarder. Uh, in order to take advantage of the Python that is installed with that. And essentially, uh, the installation instructions are uh, included in the README uh, of the app. Uh, the, the information is in the Splunk base. And um, if you have any problems with that, um, again, uh, just, just post your questions in, um, uh, uh, in, the, in the Splunk base, and we'll get to them. And another question is, does the Splunk app send alerts? Um, out of the box, uh, no. Um, we're, we, we didn't configure uh, alerts out of the box. Uh, however, um, most customers will implement uh, alerts, um, especially around uh, security-related uh, events, uh, unreconciled uh, change events, things like that. I actually have a... Uh, a large financial customer that um, was using ServiceNow with Tripwire Enterprise to reconcile changes, uh, and then uh, any of the unreconciled changes were going to Splunk, where uh, alerting occurred and uh, incident response could occur. And I have another comment. Uh, I have a thought about implementing the TE app for Splunk. Obviously, getting the app from Splunk base step one. Is there anything that needs to be done in TE to get the data to Splunk? And if I don't have Log Center IP360, and uh, the answer to that is um, in TE again, uh, the 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 README uh, outlines this. In Tripwire Enterprise, there's really two configuration items uh, that you need for the Splunk app. Uh, one of those configuration items is going to be a uh, user that Splunk is going to use to extract uh, the data for uh, file integrity monitoring and for policy test results from Tripwire Enterprise. Uh, we actually uh, uh, provide the permissions, the minimal permissions, that, that user would uh, need in order to get that information. Uh, some of the information for node management uh, seems a little bit uh, uh, more permissive than you might expect, and that is because we are also accessing uh, the Tripwire Enterprise RESTful API in order to extract um, tag information, which is basically the metadata uh, on Tripwire Enterprise assets. That's one item, so the user to extract the data. The other item is setting up uh, the TCP uh, log management. So the only thing that you need to configure there is you go into uh, the settings for your Tripwire Enterprise console, go into log management, and provide an IP address or fully qualified domain name for your Splunk system, either the heavy forwarder or the search head, wherever you uh, 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 are, are collecting, and uh, the port. Uh, for the TP, TCP syslog connection. And again, that's TCP syslog, not UDP syslog. So UDP syslog has a, a, a port of 514 by default, uh, as defined in the uh, uh, RFC. 
Uh, TCP syslog isn't so defined, so we use a port of 1468 for that by default, but you could use uh, any port. Um, I would say go with 1468 if you don't have any other uh, reason to change it, uh, and that way the app will automatically be set up correctly to uh, receive the uh, audit events from Tripar Enterprise. I hope that answers that question. Any uh, any other questions? These are great questions, by the way. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I think with that, uh, I will uh, I will end the uh, the Q and A section unless somebody else has a question. And uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, everybody, uh, 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 what is it? Uh, uh, happy splunking. All right. Talk to you. Bye-bye.